Hello everybody, this is Dan the Automator. I'm Dell the Funky Home Sapien, down with Hieroglyphics, also down with Deltron 3030, and this is What's in My Bag. The Deltron record just came out. There's a whole bunch of things that go on in making a Deltron record, lots of influences. So I thought today I would delve a little bit into the cinematic masterpieces that maybe have influenced why this record came out this way. So I'm gonna start right here with Looper. Becoming you! Oh, damn it! I've lost your fucking mind! You let this boy live! He's gonna take everything you've got! See what he becomes! I haven't seen that yet. Looper stars Joe Gordon-Levitt, a really good guy, a friend of mine, who was generous enough to do the intro to the 3040 record. It's a sci-fi sci futuristic time travel movie, so thematically it has a lot to do with the vibes we have. Joe is an amazing actor, and it was wonderful to work with him, and I just wanted to put him in my bag. The music that I picked out, this is Black Flag Damage. Big fan of Black Flag. I used to play this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. This is Black Flag too. Beat my head against the wall. Beat my head against the wall one more time. When I was hella little, I used to, when I got mad, I used to beat my head against the wall. So I was like, ooh, this is clean. I'm about to buy this. <laughs> Shaun of the Dead. Now, some of these are limited. Whoa, 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 what was that? Oh, don't I strike. Just throw it. <laughs> oh! Oh! Day. Edgar Wright, good friend of mine, he makes these incredible movies. Through um, Edgar, I got to work on Scott Pilgrim, do many fantastic things. Just felt like I would put that in my bag. This one's a new one, Earl Sweatshirt. I'm cold, hardly fucking with these niggas, nigga, listen. The description doesn't fit, if not a synonym of menace, then forget. Okay, first of all, his father is like an African poet laureate, which is, poet laureate is like the top, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a big deal. Even though he was, I guess he was never really in his life. He's young, but like, his raps are exceptional. They killing old people, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bus driver told me about him, he was like, Man, have you heard this dude? He's, he's killing it, man. This was like years before I even heard about Our Future. And then he got sent to Samoa, or, you know, the reform school or something like that, you know what I'm saying? I guess he was acting a fool. But when he came back, I just peeped the level of maturity out of his music and just, that impressed me, just that. Dude is hella smart, you know what I'm saying? I seen this and I heard this group, Apple and the Three Oranges. And I'll give you a ring, baby, when I come, if I come. I heard of this group. They had a song on a compilation or something, like a funk song. Some old, you know, older funk type of stuff. Yeah. So this one, this is a Zap. It was down with um George Clinton, Parliament, Funkadelic, you know what I'm saying? All that type of stuff. Zap was like the new generation of that. To me, this is like the precursor to like a lot of hip hop stuff. It was kind of like in the same group. It didn't have, we didn't really have a name for it yet. We just called it the beat. Everything, that type of sound, we just called it the beat. Then we have Step Up. Step Up is a movie that, for whatever reason, ends up on TNT pretty much every Friday, Thursday night at around 2 in the morning. And that just happens to be when I'm making beats usually. Half of the records I make, Step Up, has something to do with it. So I pulled out 21 Jump Street. 21 Jump Street is a masterpiece of comedy. Dude, let's just, let's just finger each other's mouths. No! Yeah. No, you're not we got fingering to... my mouth. Do you want to die? Do you want to die? Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> But also, there's a scene where him and Jonah Hill, who's also a cool cat, are going to meet Ice Cube in this Korean church. Jonah Hill's character is very nervous, so he starts praying to the Korean Jesus. Hey, Korean Jesus. He's like, Korean Jesus, blah, 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 can you help me make it through this, blah, blah, blah. As an anecdote, um, there's a particular artist who's a, a good friend of mine, this guy named David Cho. He's done videos for me and record covers and whatnot. He did the Pillow Fight record cover. One day Channing came over to, to Dave Cho's studio and brought him a present, and it was the Korean Jesus from 21 Jump Street. This right here, this is a new record, Papoose. All the double bread, burrow heads, where y'all from? All the hundred dollar billing villains, where y'all- Papoose, I hella like Papoose. 
because I just like the way his mind think. He coming from like a thug type of gangster, I guess you could say, background, but he got knowledge himself. It ain't just ignorant stuff he's spitting. But he's saying it in a way where he can relate to people that's like, you know, in the streets or whatever. Okay, this one, Marley Marl. Wow, let's play check this. We checking out some kung fu flicks at my man Quip in Medina. I think we seen him. Marley Marl, he kind of from the old, old school, so to speak. It was part of this compilation of records called Beat Generation. So it had Jay Dilla had one, Jazzy Jeff had one, and Marley Marl had one. He's one of my favorite producers, so when he came out with that, I had to get it just to see. Men in Black 2. There's a particular scene where a furry creature is clogging up the toilet. Hey, Newton. There's a huge rat in the toilet. It's all stopped up, so you're gonna have to pee in the sea. David Cross, another the great man. character in the Deltron universe, plays one of the two bickering old people in the skits called Lawn Chair Quarterbacks Part 1 and Part 2. Mad Lib is one of my fa most favorite artists. Jesus, your beat is cut in pieces like pizzas. When he grabbed the mic, these nuts said, please squeeze us. Love Mad Lib. Always been into him since I heard uh, Loot Pack on uh, The Alcoholics, because The Alcoholics introduced him to the world. And I, I heard about this one, the black tape. I wanted to see what it was about. I think it's remixes of like people's stuff. Some crazy like records though, you know, like yeah. what, obscure rappers and stuff. So to just cover it and go back full circle, the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. I thought I made it perfectly clear that employee headsets are to be worn at all times. Don't make me mention it again. Which stars none other than Amber Tamblyn, who is um, Dave Cross's significant other and the other foil in Launcher Quarterbacks. When, when, when my Sex in the City DVDs are broken, I go here. This is an older record. Kwame, the boy genius. Kwame, he was real dope to me. This album in particular, I really thought was groundbreaking. He just was real lyrical. He wasn't trying to be tough. He was like portraying a nerd damn near. Boy genius, you know what I'm saying? Like he. I could relate to him at the time, you know, still could relate to this image. He was just gifted, you know, he was hella young. He's produced by Herbie Lovebug is what it said, but. The greatest movie ever made, Cabin Boy. What the hell's that? Chucky. I'm a huge Chris Elliott fan. Chris Elliott is actually the inspiration for the Handsome Boy Modeling School, the record I do with Prince Paul. Back to Amber and Dave. One evening, I'm sitting in the car with Amber and Dave, and we're driving around New York City. Dave goes, so Dan, what's your favorite movie? And I go, Cabin Boy. Dave goes like, shut up. I was like, no, seriously, Cabin Boy is my favorite movie. In fact, my publishing company is named Shark Man Songs after Sharky the Half Shark Man. <laughs> and he was like, get the fuck out of here. I'm like, what's the big deal? He's like, don't you know? Amber's dad is Russ Tamblin, who is Sharky the Shark Man. So, wow. it all comes together. This is Dan the Automator. You've just seen what's in my bag. All right, peace.